The open beta for The First Descendant is finally here. Now everyone has a chance to dive into the game and see what it's all about. And whether you're on PC, PS5, or Xbox, it's got full cross-play compatibility if you want to play with your buds, which I highly encourage you to do. I know there's a lot of good games floating around right now, and you may be wondering if this game is good enough to warrant putting down, you know, Lies of P or Starfield or Baldur's Gate or whatever it is that you're actively playing right now. I'll give you my basic verdict up front, and then we'll spend the rest of the video unpacking what the beta has to offer and how I feel about it in depth. But uh, it is my humble opinion that this game is worth checking out while the beta is live. I mean, it's free to play, and you've only got until Monday, and it's coming Monday night at midnight Pacific, to enjoy the beta and make some progress in it. But the beta will allow you to experiment with a wide variety of playable characters shown here in the video. Now, uh, note that these are not the same list of descendants that we had access to in the uh, closed beta last year in October. This time around, we've got a couple of nice surprise additions in Kyle and Valby. So, obviously, I went straight for Valby to craft her and try her out. I'm excited to level her up, but her playstyle is highly addicting, very uh, uh, zippy in and out of, uh, of danger. Now, quick side note, last year I did make a video showing every playable character with all their backstories and gameplay of every one of their unique abilities. So, if you want to do some research before committing all of your valuable resources to unlocking a descendant, make sure you check out that video first so you know who you're going to vibe with. But the beta is fun. The abilities, the gunplay, it's all exciting and maximizing your build by equipping various relics and mods to basically every single part of your kit makes build crafting a great mini game to interact with. So that's the brief overview. Uh, let's start breaking down what the beta has to offer and talk about where it doesn't quite shine as brightly. So to kick things off, when you first fire up the beta, you'll be able to choose which descendant you want to commit to having unlocked first. So you've got Viessa, the frosty femme fatale. She's more of like a control character, kind of controlling the pace of the battlefield. You've got Lepic, the jack of all trades grenadier. And then you've got Ajax, the hardened soldier who specializes in defense and holding a position. So I went with Ajax just because, you know, I've already played all these characters with maxed out endgame gear, so I knew that Ajax would be a good solid solo play pick since uh, many missions involve holding an objective or capturing a zone. And after you make your selection, you'll dive into the main gameplay loop, which is travel to a new region, clear out all the missions in that area, and progress on to the next one. So once you've cleared every sub-region within each major region, you'll then unlock the next major region with its own unique biome and enemies, and you'll start the process all over again there. So along the way, you'll also unlock a few Colossi hunts, where you can take down towering behemoth enemies for unique crafting currencies and rare gear. Now along this journey, you'll be accompanied by The Guide, a mysterious AI created long ago who points you in the right direction, gives you advice, and Corel, the main bad guy, is gaining more and more power by leveraging something called the Iron Heart, and uh, we're trying to retrieve it. Now I'm going to be real with you here, the story is mega lame. Corel is not an interesting bad guy, the dialogue is very campy, and the English voice lines are very poorly acted in almost every case. Not only that, but the subtitles and even the item descriptions in menus were not proofread apparently because they are riddled with spelling and grammar errors. Also the gameplay loop has a little bit of monotony to it and hopefully the final game mixes it up a little bit more. Now that being said, the gameplay itself is fun, right? Using your abilities gives the game a great fun factor, each descendant behaves differently in combat, and learning what makes them unique is half the enjoyment. So catapulting myself into a mob of enemies with Ajax and stunning them, while then letting out a burst of radial energy that converts enemy health to shields for me, hey, that's just super fun. And then ripping into them with an SMG or an auto pistol, it's heckin' cool. But the enemies also have their own unique modifiers, kinda like, you know, Outriders did. Uh, some will suppress your abilities, some will rain down mortar strikes, and some will regen health and shields quickly. I mean, you get the idea. So the fights aren't all just the same. And as you play the beta, you'll be earning crafting currency to craft legendary weapons and components needed to unlock other descendants. You'll also earn credits by completing event milestones, and credits are used to skip the crafting grind and just buy the essential components directly and unlock a new character in just a handful of hours playing. 
at the seven hour milestone for me, I had already unlocked Bunny, which everyone gets by doing the main quest, and she's she's super fun. But I had also unlocked Valby by seven hours in. And at that point, you know, I was also halfway to unlocking another character just because of the crafting components that I had collected. One quick thing to note. If you don't enjoy min-maxing characters and trying to figure out the, you know, perfect combination of mods and whatnot, well, the game has an auto-equip feature. So you can just pull up the gun that you like, hit auto-equip, and the game will just toss on some mods that it thinks will be helpful. Same thing with the mods on your Descendant armor, too. So easy peasy. It keeps you playing more, spending less time in menus if that's really not your thing. As you're playing, I recommend grabbing a buddy and taking on missions together because the synergy between having multiple descendants in play makes the game so much more dynamic and fun. Ajax can take the aggro and tank damage up close while Viesa zooms around the battlefield weaving in and out of enemies, slowing them, freezing them in their tracks, and Glay can focus on single target damage for high priority enemies and leech life from them while doing it. It's, that, it's all that synergy there that makes this game really come alive. So all of that to say, the first Ascendant, it's far from a perfect game, but hey, it's a beta. The core gameplay is dynamic and quite addicting, so if you don't mind, you know, just turning off your brain a bit and ignoring the, the lame story, maybe you love it, maybe you find the story really intriguing, but I personally do not. You may just find yourself really enjoying just finding creative ways of shredding some weird alien people to bits with magic abilities and cool guns. That is the first Descendant. I hope you found this video helpful and informative. Uh, let me know who you're playing in the first Ascendant, who your next character you want to unlock might be, and what you think of the beta so far yourself if you're playing it. Uh, don't forget to check out my other first Ascendant content. I did get some uh, exclusive time with the game last year and made a, a little bit of content on that as well. And, and uh, one of those videos did, did quite well, you know, like over 200,000 views on that video. So uh, I think the game has some really good potential. People are obviously interested in it and finding it. I think it's really character driven in terms of the playable characters. That's the thing that really carries a game like this. And the playable characters in this game are really interesting. They've got great aesthetics. I think that that's really where they invested most of their time was just trying to nail down these characters that you're going to be playing. They look incredible. I mean, I haven't even put on Ajax's legendary armor that, that comes with playing the beta because frankly, I think that his base model just looks so friggin' cool, like a combination of a Viking warrior and a regal knight kind of mashed up into one. I love his whole vibe, but I'm definitely excited to continue playing the beta this week. Let me know if there's any kind of content you want to see covered on the channel about the First Ascendant if you're interested in it. Thank you so much for watching the video. Be warm and well fed, my friends, and I hope to catch you, hey, out on the battlefield.